Hi everyone, we are now going to watch a video on graphing linear functions. And as you can see here, uh, this student wrote on his paper abstract, the more graphs you make, the less cool you become. And so what you can see here is that he's saying that the more graphs that you draw, the less cool you become. Uh, the cool factor, your y value, will decrease here. So that's just a little funny thing to look at um, when talking about linear functions. So we are going to start by graphing some, well, one horizontal and one vertical line. Um, so I've got these graphs here, and the first graph we're going to create is y equals negative 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do that on this graph up here. So I'm going to write it y equals negative 3. So I want you to think about this for just a second. Your x-axis is your horizontal axis and your y-axis is your vertical axis. Okay, so what you want to do to graph y equals negative 3 is you want to go to the place where does y equal negative 3 and it's down here, okay? And then you want to draw a line that's perpendicular to the y-axis. And so in this case, it's going to go right here because this is the line that represents all of these points where the y-value is negative 3. You've got 1 negative 3 and 2 negative 3 and 3 negative 3, okay? And so that's where this comes from why we draw it in this manner. So if it's y equals, it's going to be a horizontal line. All right, so now the second graph I want to do is x equals 2. So we'll do x equals 2 over in this coordinate plane. So x equals 2, what is this one going to look like? Well, keep in mind our x-axis is this vertical axis, or horizontal axis, I'm sorry. And so on the x-axis, we want to go to positive 2. And so we want all the points where x equals 2. And so we draw the line that's perpendicular to that axis. Okay, because this is 1, 2. And... Up here, we've got 5, 2, okay? Or, I'm sorry, 2, 5. Oh, my goodness. Sorry, guys. So this is 2, 1, and 2, 5. So what we want to do here is on the x-axis, we go to 2, and then we're going to go ahead and draw... Ooh. Draw the line that is perpendicular to the x-axis at that point. Okay. And this is all of the points that represent where x equals 2. So 2, 0 is one of them. Okay. 2, 4. x equals 2 in this one. Okay. And then, for example, 2, negative 6. So this is the line that represents where x is 2 in each of those points, okay? And so when you have x equals, it's always going to be a vertical line. All right, and then to get to that bottom graph, I'm going to have to get rid of these graphs. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down. So on this last graph down here, we're going to go ahead and graph y equals x. Okay, so what is y equals x? Well, it means that all of your x and y values are the same. So if you plug in negative 2 for x, you get negative 2 for y. 0 for x, you get 0 for y. One, negative, or positive 1 for x, positive 1 for y. And so if you graph that, you're going to see negative 2, negative 2, 0, 0, 1, 1, Okay, and you could keep on going here. I always want at least three to five points to create a line. And then you go ahead and I want you to draw a line through it. And I want you to draw a line. 
a line here that's going to go all the way through your coordinate plane, okay? Don't just draw a part of the line. Make that line go all the way through the coordinate plane here, okay? And this leads us into slope-intercept. So slope-intercept, y equals mx plus b. m represents our slope, okay, which is rise over run. And B represents the y-intercept. And so the y-intercept is that starting point on the y-axis. Okay, so on this one here, there is no intercept, which would make it 0. Okay, and then the slope was just 1, so up 1 and over 1 for each of these. Okay. So now let's graph couple in slope-intercept form. So example A here, f of x equals 3x plus 4. All right, so we've got a y-intercept of 4 and a slope of 3 over 1 because the denominator is always 1 if there's no denominator. Okay, so I'm going to graph a in here, and I'm going to go up to positive 4 for my y-intercept and make a point. Then the slope is 3 over 1, which means that it's rise over run. I go up 3 and over 1 to get my first point, which will be right here. Now, you can also go down 3 and to the left one, okay, so if you go down 3, negative 3 over negative 1, then that would also be positive 3 because negative 3 over negative 1 gives you positive 3 for the slope, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and color these points here, here, and here. I always want at least three points, and I do want you to draw that line all the way through the whole coordinate plane, stretch it all the way through for me, okay? Now in example B, I'm going to go ahead and bring this guy over to here. 3x plus y equals 9. This is not in slope-intercept form. This is actually what we call standard form, okay? And that's because we've got the x plus the y equal to 9, okay? Now, we, it's not that standard form is bad. It's just not as easy to graph. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it in slope-intercept form, okay? So I'm going to subtract 3x over to this side, and I'm going to get y equals negative 3x plus 9. And that's what I'm going to graph here. And negative 3 is over 1, and that'll be my slope. And my intercept, where I'm going to start, is up at positive 9. So I'm going to count up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and I'm going to make my first point up at positive 9, because that's my y-intercept. Then I'm going to do a slope, and what's my slope going to be? I'm going to go down 3 and to the right 1. And that's where my next point's going to be. Okay, and I'm going to repeat that here. So I'm going to go down three again over one and make another point. And I'm going to go ahead and do this one more time down three over one and make another point. Okay. And so that'll be that line drawn in the coordinate plane. So I need to scroll down again, so go ahead and pause the video if you need to catch up a little bit, and then we'll do example C. So our last example is C here, and it's 5x minus 2y equals 12. And so we want to get y by itself. We've got a couple steps that we're going to need to do in order to accomplish that. So we need to subtract 5x over to the right-hand side. We want to get rid of it on the left, 
And so over here on the left, we should just have negative 2y. Don't forget to bring down that negative 2. And then over here, and I'm going to write it with the x first, just so that it fits the y equals mx plus b, negative 5x plus 12. Okay. Then I am going to go ahead and get y by itself completely, dividing by negative 2, negative 2, and negative 2. All terms need to be divided by that negative 2 here. So y is going to equal, it'll be positive 5 over 2x and minus 6. And we want to leave slope as a fraction because keep in mind that slope is always rise over run. Okay, so leave that slope as a fraction. Do not change it to a decimal. So my y-intercept is at negative 6, so I'm going to count down. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then my slope is 5 over 2, so I'm going to go up 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. And I'm going to make my second point. And I'll go ahead and do that one more time. I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and over 2. And so now I'm going to go ahead. Did I? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. My slope looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my line all the way through the coordinate plane for this example. Okay? So. Tomorrow we'll do a little bit more work with these and make sure we all understand all of this graphing stuff. Have a wonderful day.